Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at Baxter Cycle and the Mighty Minitropolis of Marnie and look what I got behind me today. This is one I've really wanted to do a video on for quite a while. Now I have done videos on Royal Enfield Classics before and I've probably done videos on the Signals model one, but uh, this is a bone stock Royal Enfield Classic 350 Signals in the marsh gray color. When I originally got my Classic, I wanted either the marsh gray or the tan version of this bike. I really like it because it's got some individualistic features on it that I think are really neat and unique. The color, of course, the signals badge, this uh, medallion kind of a thing here. Each one has its own unique number. Every one of them is a different number. And it's got this badge on the side. I like the blacked out engine, the spoke wheels. Just a really neat thing. So real quick, what this is, this is a uh, 349cc single cylinder air cooled single overhead cam, two valve, Makes about 20 horsepower, 20 foot-pounds of torque. That's about uh, 27 newton meters. All of that goes through this wonderful five-speed transmission. Now, I do own one of these, and I will tell you, it's the second best transmission Royal Enfield has. It's just dead smooth. It's their best five-speed as far as I'm concerned. The uh, front brake is a 300 millimeter disc with a dual-pot vibrate, ABS, of course. Spoked wheel, so it's a tube tire. Look at this big, large metal fender. On the rear, this is kind of interesting, it's got a 270 millimeter disc, an extra large, with a single pop vibrate, shocks on the back. The front tire is a 190-19, and the rear tire is a 120-80-18. Front suspension is a 41 millimeter tubes, and they're covered tubes, you don't have to worry about getting bugs and things like that on them. And they've got about 5.1 inches of travel on the front, that's about 130 millimeters. On the rear, there's about 3.1 inches of travel, dual shocks on the rear, by the way. That's about 80 millimeters. Seat height on this, and this is really hard to believe. I have a Royal Enfield Himalayan that's supposed to have a 31 and a half inch seat. This has a 31.7 inch seat, about 805 millimeters. This feels much lower than my Himalayan. And the reason is it's narrower. The bike itself is quite narrow and lower, lower center of gravity. So that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Wheelbase on this hot rod, 54.7 inches. That's uh, 1,389 millimeters ground clearance. 6.7 inches, quite a bit of ground clearance. That's about 170 millimeters. I did take uh, my signals, I'm sorry, my Royal Enfield Classic. I've got about 6,000 miles on it. I did about uh, 40 miles, 50 miles of dirt one day and it did it just fine. Uh, lots of rough road and uh, it performed admirably. You know, these bikes are designed in India for the Indian market and uh, they are, they will handle rough, rough terrain. Just they'll do it great. Fuel tank, 3.4 gallons, that's about 13 liters. I get in the 60s regularly, and I ride mine pretty hard. If you took it easy, uh, I've heard of people getting in the 80s, so let's say 70s, you know, high, high 60s, low 70s on average. Wet weight on this thing, this is the heaviest of the 350s, 430 pounds, that's about 195 kilograms, and it just doesn't feel like that. I would love to weigh one to be sure of that, but I think the reasoning is such a low seat, narrow motorcycle, and a very low center of gravity. So uh, now that I've given you all that pertinent information, <laughs> I'm going to gear up and we, you and I, are going to go take that hot rod for a ride. Wahoo! The sound of thunder. Hot rod. I like it. Look at that row of bikes there, huh? Absolutely beautiful day here at the motorcycle shop. If you all are in the market for a new or used Royal Enfield Triumph classic British bike of any types, get yourself over here to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa. The mighty Minitropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Or go to BaxterCycle.com. They got parts, accessories, boots, clothes, bags, you name it, they got it. Tell them Fuzzy Biker sent you. Wahoo! We are now on the massive main street of Mighty Marnie. Let's give this thing a little spin in the road and see what kind of action we can get here. What do they say? 54 point something? <laughs> I can't remember. Wheelbase. Nice and short. Does it so well. Look at that. I just love these bikes. They've got to be some of the best handling little bikes out there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now this little motorcycle is bone stock. Not a thing's been done to it. As a matter of fact, it just got out of the crate yesterday. So we're going to kind of take it easy on it. Welcome to South Marnie. Thing picks up just grand, doesn't it? I like it. Look at this, spins around in a dime, gives you two nickels change. It's got 300 millimeter fixed disc on the front with a dual piston vibrate caliper. 
On the rear, and it's ABS by the way, front and back, on the rear it's got a 270 millimeter single disc with a single piston by Recaliper. I think the brakes on these are excellent, I just love them. They do work very well and they're incredibly predictable and uh, predictability on brakes is something you really want. <laughs> I love riding these motorcycles. These have got to be some of the funnest bikes out there and I love the styling here. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, time for the famous hill spin test. Look at that, look at that. Spins like a dream, turns like a dream. If you ever get yourself over to Marnie, Iowa, get yourself up here to the derail grill right there. Good eats, good eats. Loads of torque. And they handle so well, you know. I just love riding them. Like I said, I have one of my own with about uh, a little over 6,000, 6,100 6, miles on it, something like that. I got it last summer and just uh, enjoy riding it. I call it my grocery skitter. I've got big bags on the back of it and the touring seat and some other things, but uh, anytime I got to go to the store or anything like that, I take that bike because it's just so easy to ride around town on the road, anywhere actually. And it's got lots of uh, storage so I can you know, load the thing up. I would much rather drive my motorcycle than my truck or my car, so you know, that's how it goes. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at the trees there, just to turn in. Iowa fall is here. Let's run down here to Motorcycle Park and see what we can learn. A lot of loose gravel there. Is that, that's what we can learn. <laughs> Wahoo! Right. Like I said, a real hoot to ride, you know? What is a hoot? Well, this is a hoot. If you uh, look up hoot in the dictionary, this is what shows up. Absolutely beautiful little motorcycle and just a grin. To, you know, puts a smile on your face to ride this thing. Uh, so, we've talked about the specs already. I want to point out the styling because that's really the next big thing about this one. And one of the things, one of the reasons this is one of their best-selling motorcycles for infield, and uh, you know, it looks like a classic motorcycle. I have had mine at the gas station before, and people will ask me what year it is. Mine's a 22. I'll tell them, and they still say, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure your motorcycle's a 2022? Uh, you know, and of course it is. And uh, you know, I point out the disc brakes to them and the fuel injection, and you know, they kind of look bewildered and move on. But uh, you know, it's a very good looking motorcycle in the classic sense. And it's got all the uh, metal. Everything's metal, you know. This is cast aluminum, this uh, whatever they call that. You know, it's got, you know, everything is, these are metal, you know. Every little chunk of it is just, uh, they've done a really good job that way. That's also why it's probably the heaviest of the 350s. Uh, good looking motorcycle, you know, going back here to the front. Spoke wheels, um, fender that goes all the way down in the back here. Check that out there. And of course we have to have disc brakes on a modern motorcycle anymore. We've got the covered forks, which is really a nice thing. Jumping up here, I'm not sure what this covers, but it's a real nice dress up. And it's something I've noticed on older Himalayans. So I think it's a carryover from that. Very good looking headlight. I think I've got a little beak that sticks out on mine. Notice these, I, I call them tiger eyes. Some people call them pilot lights. I think it's a very nice look. You know, very nice. And like I said earlier, this is a cast piece. This whole thing is cast aluminum. You know, they could have did that in plastic, but they didn't. They did in aluminum. I'm very proud of that. So jumping down here, big old exhaust pipe, you know, flat blacked, blacked out engine on this particular model. Beautiful foot pegs. They say Royal infilled on them. Big old brake lever. I just love the way this whole thing is done. There's a document holder in here on both sides, I believe. I think one side has a tool kit, the other side has a battery. I love the way this frame, this is a copy of the old fashioned frame from days gone by. The new Super Meteor is going to have the same kind of a detail on the frame. The Super Meteor 650 has the uh, new 650 twin engine, but it'll have that same kind of a swooping detail. And that, that's a throwback to days gone by, you know. I love the split seat. I've got this kind of seat on mine, except I've got the touring seat on mine. So these are my Royal Enfield Alpine Star gloves. I just love them. Very nice. But uh, isn't that just gorgeous, you know. This is supposed to look like an air box, you know, toolkit on this side. Of course. You know, and then look at this back here, this detail on the back. Very classic, cl you know, very classic looking back end. Love everything about it. I love everything about it. And then this kind of mimics the tank shape also. If you look at the shape of the inlet, the shape of this, the shape of this, and then the shape of this. And that's something I've got to give infield uh, the style department at infield credit for. They are very good about the details. I mean, look at this. This is very classic. We'll get back to that in a second. But look at this here. You know how this relates to this. All the way back to the back. They've just done a really good job. You know, even the pipe looks 
you know, nice and old, you know. If it wasn't for the disc brakes, it would be easy to mistake this for an older motorcycle. Okay, let's jump up here real quick. I want to talk about the levers on these. Now, these are my some of my favorite levers on motorcycles right now. They've got a really good sweep to them, bend to them. So instead of adjustability, you've got that bend to them. You can, you know, put them in the right spot. Your fingers in the right spot works real well. They are uh, wider through here than they are at the ends or over here. They've got a radius end here. They're very comfortable and easy to use, you know, and they work very well with what I call the Amal style grips. So the Amal style grips, along with these uh, really nifty clutch levers, very nice. Other things up here, information button, right back here. I always forget to point this out. There is a, a waterproof USB right down here that is only active when the bike is running. The uh, pass to flash, low beams, high beams, blinkers, horn, then over here, it's kill switch, run switch, and start switch. And then of course, this is, these are the hazard lights. Clutch, I mean brake lever over yonder. Um, this is kind of an interesting thing here, and I want to talk about that real quick. I call this both a strong suit and a weak part of this motorcycle. It's, it's both things. And I call it the uh, weak part of the motorcycle in that very minimal information. You know, it's just a speedometer, no tachometer, very small LCD, not a lot of information there. Just a very basic, kind of what you would have on an old motorcycle. Now this does have, when you turn it on, a battery light, engine light, ABS light. It does have a digital fuel gauge down here. It does have a... Uh, trip meter here using this button here we can change that it's on f trip f right now because we're low on gas but you can go there's a clock there's a odometer trip one and trip two no gear indicator you know uh, the clock doesn't show all the time it it, uh, it only shows if you put it on clock but uh, you know very minimalistic information and uh, the other thing about that is uh, it's very hard to see when i'm riding this motorcycle i have to literally look down to see the, the gauge and I ride with a helmet all the time. I always wear a helmet, either my full face or my uh, partial. Uh, with a partial, it's not so bad. It's just a short look down. But with my full face helmet, I really got to look down. You know, I got to look over the chin bar of the helmet. So it makes it kind of hard to see. And uh, you would think, well, that's a terrible thing, right? Well, actually, it's not. <laughs> I consider that one of the strong suits of this bike. Because when I go out riding on this motorcycle, you know, two-lane black topping, things like that. You know, this bike doesn't like to go much over 60, 65. You can really hear it when it does go over that. So you really don't need to pay much attention to the speedometer, but you don't end up babying the tachometer. You don't end up babying the gauges. You don't end up looking at that kind of stuff all the time. You're free to enjoy the outside of the motorcycle. You know, there's riding inside of a motorcycle. It's where you're sitting on the motorcycle and you're paying attention to all the little details and looking at the gauges and what your feet are doing, hands are doing, all that. And then there's riding outside of the motorcycle. When you ride outside of the motorcycle, that means you're enjoying the scenery. You're looking at the trees. You're looking at the ground, the scene, you know, the, the cows in the field, the, whatever, you know, you have around your area. But uh, this motorcycle lends itself to riding outside of the motorcycle because one, it's so easy to ride. And two is it, it doesn't have that much power. And the gauges are kind of hard, to, you know, not hard to see, but you have to look down to see the gauges. So when you're riding this motorcycle going down the road, you can literally feel like you're just going through the air, you know, going through the air without a care. Just a kind of a beautiful thing. And I like that. I like that. I can't say enough good about it. It's just, it's just a great little thing. If y'all are interested in something like this, get yourselves down here to Baxter Cycle. If y'all are interested in a new Royal Enfield, used Royal Enfield, Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, accessories, doodads, seats, you know, foot pegs. I've got foot pegs on mine, the bags on mine, I've got the extra seat on mine. They even make a windshield for that. If you need any of that stuff, get over to BaxterCycle.com or get yourself over here to Baxter Cycle, the mighty metropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Anyway, it is a great day out. I think I am going to go hop on a motorcycle and go for a ride. Y'all do the same if you can. Life is good. Wahoo!